Hi there, I'm Jamie Keat. Welcome to 5 Great Google Doc Features. Use the menu on the right hand side to help jump through the video. At any time, hit the home button to get back to this screen. If you like what you see, please subscribe. The first great feature in Google Docs I want to talk about is voice typing. Now to get to voice typing, it's quite easy. Just go up to your menu bar and you see under tools and scroll down a little bit under word count, you'll see voice typing. Just click on it, the microphone will appear, and you're ready to go once you click it. Let's give it a try. How are you today? Question mark. New line. I'm fine, thank you. Period. New paragraph. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Exclamation mark. So you can see it picks up my voice quite easily and sometimes I notice with internet speeds and connections it can have a few more errors. If I'm not pronouncing my words quite clearly it can have some errors but generally it it works quite well. You can go back and correct errors by highlighting and making changes and just talking over the word if you do want to make a change uh, without turning anything off. This is available in over 40 languages also so it has a large spectrum of users that could take advantage of this. For me inside the classroom I really like the idea of students using this to write stories or get their ideas out differently uh, than just typing it. So I think this is one of the great features that Google Docs has added recently to their program. Another great feature I want to talk about that Google Docs has is the research tool. To find that you just go up to the tools menu option again, click on it, and then you'll see it second down research. Let's say you were writing a paper and I wish I would have had this during my university days, but let's say I was writing something about Albert Einstein and I needed to get some information on him. So I'm just going to, I had it copied, I'm going to paste it in there. And we're going to say that I had this article that I was using in my, in my paper. So to insert it as a, uh, to cite it, or to just insert it, you can see it goes right in with all the formatting. Now I could have chose a different format too. So if I just go back up to this little arrow up here, you can see in that case it was already on Chicago. I could go to MLA scroll down and I'll find it again here and insert it and you can see the changes that are made and I'll insert it one more time and this time I'll go to APA. So very easy to cite like I said if you've spent a lot of time trying to figure out where the commas go, uh, where the where the periods go, where the dates go, this is a great way to speed you up. You can also uh, do this, you can just have to go up here and change to uh, images and it will give you the images and you can also see that you can look to see if it's free to use or not filtered. I'm just going to use the free to use uh, and if I wanted to use a picture I'll scroll down and I'm going to take uh, I'm just going to take this one. I'm just going to drag it over and right away you can see they've cited it at the bottom of the page you can see it, where it was retrieved from. So very very simple uh, simple ways to uh, make sure your research and your setting is correct. Uh, one more thing I just wanted to show you that I find kind of neat is the, and I'll drop down here, are the quotes and I'll just leave it as Albert Einstein, uh, Albert Einstein. Uh, and you can see all the different quotes that you can insert into your paper. I'll just hit enter a few times here and I'll just insert this one and then it goes um, right into it. So, and again, we have it cited at the bottom of the page. So this makes for very, very easy research citing bibliographies. Uh, I wish I would have had this uh, a few years ago. So uh, something that can save you a lot of time, something to introduce to your students uh, to show them how easy it can be to cite things correctly. Google Doc templates have become a great feature. I never really used them before. I never found them that attractive, but the new ones have quite a professional look to them. I'm going to show you where they're located if you haven't seen them already. Just go up to your file menu, go to new, and then scroll down to from template. When you click that, you'll be introduced to all the new templates that Google Docs has. Now, as you can see right away, they have quite a professional look to them. 
I just think about all the time that I that I, it could be saved with now choosing one of these templates and just modifying pictures or changing the titles to what I need and they're set up in such an attractive way. So even for my kids in my uh, classroom, if they were using a story template, and I'll just do, choose the story template here, you can see it loads up, puts a picture, has the title, and it's all ready to go. They can just alter a few things, delete the information below, and they can start typing. What I really like with the voice uh, typing that I talked about before, picture that this, they open up their template, they're all ready to go, they just start voice typing. So these new changes are making it a lot more accessible for many different types of students to get their ideas on page. So there is another way you can get to uh, your templates. If you're starting from your uh, Google Docs at any time, right across the top of it, you'll see that it's available for you. If you uh, only see this top view like this, just make sure you hit the more up top and it will stretch out to see more. So these new templates, I think, will speed up people's uh, productivity in creating great looking documents in Google Docs. And it's something I think that was missing for a long time, but now they have them. If you want to see all the changes that you or anybody else has made to a document, revision history is a great feature to use. So let me give you an example how this works. I have a document here that I uh, just copied and pasted some things into a few weeks ago, putting a list together. So you'll find uh, revision history under the file and see revision history. And what happens is at first you can see when it was created on September 3rd, gives the time. Uh, and you can see how it's changed, uh, altered color when I did that too. But I'm going to hit uh, down at the bottom here, show more detailed revisions. And it kind of goes through the timeline of how, uh, when, and when I did things on it. So for instance, if I click at 251, you can see it brought back to where I was at 251, at 255, uh, where I was a few minutes later. Uh, so at any of these points, this is what I like. Uh, if something was deleted out of it or if, uh, or if you wanted to go back to an early part, all you have to do is hit restore this version and that's where it goes to. So I find this is really great when students are uh, in group work because you can see when they've shared a document with you, you, you can see who's been working on what, when they've been working, and if someone else actually... Uh, deletes anything on purpose or not on purpose, then you can get it back and you can see actually who did it by their login and the time that they did it. So revision history is a great feature uh, if you want to keep track of who's doing what or just to protect your uh, all the work that you've done. The last great feature I'm going to talk about today in Google Docs are add-ons. So what add-ons do is they just make your Google Docs do a little bit more. Third-party developers have designed programs that you can add on to your Google Docs uh, to get things specifically done that you might want. So they're really easy to install. Just go up to your add-ons menu and you can see get add-ons. When you click it, it brings you to the store. And right away you can kind of scroll and see many, many add-ons. Uh, if you kind of scroll over, you can see different ratings on each one. Uh, for example, um, I'm going to choose to put in Lucid Chart here. This is a mind mapping one. I've used it before. I'll just show you how easy it is to install an, uh, an add-on and how quickly they're ready to go. So once you click it, all you have to do is hit Allow. And then once you go back to your add-ons, you can see I have Lucid diagrams right there. And then you can see it's loading up. And I'm just going to grab one for example. You can modify it and everything too, but I'm just going to hit insert. And it's working very slow right now. But you can see um, I have, uh, if it was a main idea uh, that I wanted to put in, if I was planning a story, uh, this is a tool you could use. So uh, I'm not going through the whole process how to use Lucid Chart, just showing you how easy it is to use add-ons. So again, if you're interested in the add-ons, go up to add-ons, click get add-ons, and you can scroll through. If you want to get rid of an add-on, let's say this Lucid Chart, I didn't want it anymore, just go back to your add-ons, click Manage Add-ons, and you'll get the ones that you have installed. Just click on it, click Manage, and you can see there's a Remove button right there. And you click it, and if I go back, 
you can see it's gone. It's that simple. So take a look at the add-ons. It might make your life a little bit simpler or your students.